Welcome to Developing Graphics Frameworks with Python and OpenGL, Part 26, Geometry Boxes. In the previous video, you created the Geometry class, which is used to define the shape of an object, storing vertex-related properties using attributes. And also in the last video, you created the first extension of this class, the rectangle class, which is the simplest shape you can probably create other than a triangle, but that shape's a two-dimensional shape. In this video, we're going to create our first three-dimensional shape. We're going to create a box. Well, what can you say about boxes? Uh, boxes have eight vertices, and they have six sides, and each side uh, is rectangular in shape. This might look like a cube, but in general, a box can have different width, height, and depth. So it has six sides that are all rectangular, and each of those six sides will be divided into two triangles, and that means you'll have 12 triangles all together. And uh, what else? In this diagram, the dashed lines indicate sides which are obscured from view because they're blocked by the faces of the cube. So vertex P0 is the farthest away corner from us as, as the viewer. Uh, the origin of the XYZ axes, that's going to be in the center of the cube. And so, or the box rather. And so, for instance, if the width of the box is W, then the X coordinates are going to be positive or negative W divided by 2. Uh, the height refers to the extent in the Y direction, and the depth will refer to the extent in the Z direction. All right, so in terms of actually visualizing the triangles, this diagram is a little bit difficult to explain. So one thing that we like to do is imagine unfolding that box. Right? Imagine you're able to cut it along some of the edges around part of the top and part of the bottom. And then you were to unfold it, you would get a diagram that looks kind of like this. Right? So this side, for instance, had vertices P6, P7, P5, and P4. Right? That was this side, P6, P7, P5, and P4. That was the front side along the positive x-axis. Similarly, this was the back side. Right? It was made up of the other four vertices. One of the things you might notice is that some of the vertices appear more than once. For example, here's vertex P3 and here's P3 again. Those do correspond to the same point in space. Maybe you could imagine tracing this out on a piece of paper and folding it back up into a cube. This point would align with this point P3. This point P2 would align with this point and would also align with this point over here. And because this is P2 on the back side, which connects to this vertex on the top. I also like to color code the sides. The x-axis, I color it as red. And so I'd color those sides of this cube as a bright and dark red. The top and the bottom, I colored in green. And the front and the back, colored in blue. Once you're able to render this box, these are three different views on what it will look like. And that's about it. To create this class, again, we're going to extend the geometry class. And basically, there's just a lot of points to type in. Uh, the box geometry class and also the rectangle geometry class, they're kind of interesting in that they're some of the easiest classes and we can actually write out the coordinates of the vertices pretty easily. Later on, when we talk about other geometric shapes, like polygons or spheres or cylinders, we're actually going to start using functions, mathematical functions, to generate the positions of the vertices. But here, in these introductory examples, we're just going to type them all out by hand, because we can. All right, heading over to our development environment, Sublime Text. Uh, within the Geometry directory, I'm going to right-click and make a new file. 
and immediately save this. Uh, this is going to represent a box, so we'll call it box geometry, the lowercase b, dot pi. And just like we needed in the rectangle class, there's going to be two import statements uh, from the geometry directory geometry file. We're going to import the capital G geometry class. And once again, all these classes which extend geometry, they actually specify the attributes, so we will always need to import the attribute class. Oops, and make sure that we get that capital A on the class names. All right, uh, this is class box geometry, extending the geometry class. I'm gonna define the constructor and we can specify the width, the height, and the depth. Again, those are the extents along the x, y, and z axes. We'll give them all default values of one. Now first, we've got to initialize everything in the base class. So we can use that dictionary of attributes. And now, well, let's go ahead and create our points. Uh, so width over 2, negative height over 2, negative depth over 2. P0 was the vertex all the way in the back. So I had negative coordinates. All right, so I'm copy-paste action and changing the names of those points. And again, I ordered these so you get some kind of patterns in the signs here. So for the x-coordinates, the negative signs alternate. For the y-coordinates, we have two negatives and two positives, two negatives and two positives. So notice the pattern of the signs there. And then for the z-coordinates, we have four negatives and four positives. All right, we also need to specify the colors for the faces. Um, and we're going to do those, uh, I'll specify the order x positive, x negative, so those will be shades of red, followed by y positive and y negative, I'll use shades of green, and z positive, z negative, I'll use shades of blue, but of course you could change these to whatever you wish. So c1 and c2 for the x-axis, I'll make that maybe uh, 1, 0, 0 for a bright red for the positive, maybe a darker red for the negative for C3 and C4 I'll use a bright green for the positive followed by a darker green for the negative side then C5 and C6 I'll use a bright blue for the positive and a darker blue for the negative side. All right, so we've defined all the positions, we've defined all the colors. Now we just have to stack them into arrays. All right, so it helps uh, if you have more than one window open to have this picture somewhere convenient and to see what the unfolded box looks like. Um, I actually have that written down to the side over here. So I can just read off all the different coordinates Again, I'm going to start off with the front side, and that's going to be, let's see, P5, P1, P3, P5, P3, P7. Then the negative X side, that's going to be P0, P4, P6, P0, P6, P2. Next, the Y coordinate sides. P6, P7, P3, P6, P3, P2. The negative Y is P0, P1, P5, P0, P5, P4. And then the Z coordinate, P4, P5, P7, P4, P7, P6, that's the positive Z side. 
and then the negative z side is p1, p0, p2, p1, p2, p3. All right, hopefully that's right. Fortunately, again, it's hard to check. Oh, you can't even see that. Hang on, let me scroll that up a bit. There we go. Unfortunately, it's really hard to make sure that we've got this right until we can actually render these things. And that's why we're going to race to the renderer class sometime over the next three or four videos. Uh, for color data, uh, to set this up, basically I want the entire first face to be color C1, repeated six times, and then this next one to be color C2, repeated six times. But Python's got some really great ways to work with arrays. So if I want to repeat that six times, I can actually throw that in an array and multiply the array by six. It's convenient. And then, using addition, that concatenates arrays. Concatenate that with C2, repeated six times. C3, repeated six times. Oh, should not be a comma. That should be an addition. Concatenate with C4, repeated six times. Concatenate with C5 repeated six times. And then finally C6 repeated six times. Right, and that will set up the different colors associated to the faces as specified right up here. That's great. Uh, now that we have the data arrays, it's time to create the attributes and put them in the dictionary and count the vertices. And one interesting thing, earlier we said the cube has eight vertices. It might be more accurate to say the, the cube has eight points. It's defined by eight points, but those points get repeated because each point appears in triangles multiple times. And so how many vertices are there really? Right, there's 12 triangles, each with three vertices, so there's really 36 vertices created by repeating those points. All right, so let's go ahead and set up attributes. So in the attributes dictionary, this is going to be associated with a variable called vertex position. It's going to be an attribute of type vec3. It takes in position data. And then something very similar for color data. And that's going to be associated to a variable in the shader called vertex color. And that attribute is a vec3. And we're going to put color data. We're going to put that array in that vertex buffer. And then finally, we can run the function to count the vertices. And that's it. Uh, that's how we specify a cube. Now, we could go on talking about shapes, and at some point we will. But really, the next step to move along in the rendering process, we now know what the, shapes, what the shape of the objects is. That's what the geometry class does. The next step is to define the material class. Right? That's where we're going to put our shader code. That's where we'll specify uniform objects and then the, any other render settings we need. So we'll create the materials, and then we'll create a renderer class to kind of put it all together so we can actually see some of these three-dimensional objects. So the next video will be all about the material class. Thanks for watching.